Hello YouTube, I am here to talk with you today about the dialogue initiated by Critical Praxis on the David Halperin article, The Normalization of Queer Theory. In a very succinct five-page essay, Halperin discusses how queer theory began in academic contexts and then takes us through to where he sees queer theory now. At the end of the day, he is not happy with where queer theory has sort of landed in its current instantiation. Halprin feels that it started out as a revolutionary, extremely radical or political approach, and that as it's being deployed currently, it's, it's become apolitical, it's become removed from queer bodies, and that it become largely a skill set, critical praxis refers to it frequently as a skill set, uh, being taken up by grad students and by publishing academics who are not queer. As a person who's interested in how power functions, how discursive cycles kind of like look, seeing them, finding them, understanding them, performativity, have agency in matters, how to affect change, all those sorts of things. Of course, appreciate Halperin's article along those lines, particularly within the context of queer theory. He's saying an idea that once was radical has now become normal, mundane, every day. However, I felt left wanting more. This is only, this is such a short article and kind of just feel like Halperin's describing hegemony and applying it to queer theory. So, that's how hegemony works. Any radical idea that gets taken up, which is what you hope for, kind of, right? When, you, when you're a revolutionary or a radical, you hope that you can affect change and that it can get taken up, that idea that you're putting out there into discourse. Um, whenever that happens, the idea will become diluted, right? The powers that be will take what they feel like they want or what they can handle and they will leave other parts right? or they think they'll understand it and they won't. They'll understand parts of it and the idea will become distorted until another revolutionary radical idea comes along and then they'll take up that. Right? That's how power works. It's that back and forth. People in positions of power are poachers, sneaky jerks. That's what they do. And at the end of the essay where Halperin urges his readership to have more um, radical ideas, we need to um, not be complacent with queer theory as it is. I appreciate that because, yeah, that's what you have to do. You don't want to be part of the status quo powers that be, right? You have to be putting ideas out there and not just taking other people's ideas. Okay, so that's kind of my uh, treatment on the article itself. More so getting at responding to Critical Praxis's video and the Halperin argument as well in terms of queer theory becoming a skill set that is applied in um, non-political contexts, removed from queer bodies. I guess I want to say that even learning a political theory as a well-intentioned grad student or academic, spending a lot of time with it, reading about it, um, and then applying it to a text, whatever that text may be, I think that that is something I support more than I discourage. Uh, certainly can come with its own problems, but I would much rather a straight white guy read a hell of a lot on queer theory and then go see a play and want to write an essay about the non-linear story arc of the play from the lens of queer temporality even though they may be taking up queer theory in a sort of apolitical, sterile way, I think I'm, I'm happier that that individual learned about the theory, whatever theory it may be, and that they took up the labor um, and love to, to write that essay, right? It's not easy. Um, and I think that it adds to discourse. Discourse never exists in a vacuum. Despite how few people read your articles, I think it does something to you as the author and to your readership. And that's meaningful, right? I believe in that process. I think we need to not forget that, I want to say. I don't want to forget that. This is me reminding myself that that, that process is meaningful and it matters. It certainly matters more than a person just being some bro off the street who like never even took up the time to 
consider those things. I am grateful that how the theory building works in a particular way where the guy who wants to write about the play can um, say, hey, I'm using queer theory in this essay and I'm going to apply it to this context. And then people like Halperin or whomever can come along and say, actually, I don't think you're using queer theory correctly. You need to think about these things. I don't like that. And that's how theory further. It's how theory building works. You write something, someone criticizes it or someone comments on it. It's part of this dialogue that we have. And then hopefully that theory and the application of that theory kind of um, cycles along. Now, as a feminist, myself and others, other feminists are frequently frustrated by not even the uh, misdeployment or poor deployment of feminist theory, whether it be sterile context, removed from bodies, or just done wrong. But what I would say even worse is that those theories are, um, they're not even identified as feminist theory. People will come along and say, hey, thought of this new theory, it's really great, or, you know, this interesting method, and don't even give credit to original feminist theory that it came from, right? Or original, however you want to kind of approach that. But, you know, there's no credit given, and that's such a common phenomenon within theory building. On that note, I would like to, to even be thankful to the people deploying queer theory incorrectly, at least they are identifying the attempt so that they can be reprimanded by folks like Halperin or whomever. And that's so important to theory building. Okay, as a final note, I want to say I totally agree with critical praxis that education as a whole, particular academic context, but also K-12, through just the kind of um, neoliberalization of education has... It, it is removed from body. I want to allow anyone to apply any theory to, to text. I, I do want to encourage those practitioners, theoretical practitioners, to be thinking through what are they considering their text. Why write about a play? <laughs> or, you know, plays are great. I shouldn't say that. I'm a performance person. But, um, you know, why not write about something that has an effect on an actual body? Why don't we write about... Um, ourselves, our own positionalities, um, our own experiences. Let's really start thinking through what we consider texts outside of the kind of canonical standard texts that we're probably uh, taking up more often than not. So that's sort of my feminist take on David Halperin's normalization of queer theory, and I hope that you enjoyed it. See you later.